welcome to Professor Wright. You have a voice. Let's find it. And welcome back to Professor Wright. I am the Professor D.A. Adams. Glad to have you back here for video number 13. We're moving into a new segment this time. We're now going to move on from the writing process and we're going to pick up on the collegiate essay. And in this video, we're going to break it down into the parts of an essay. But first, before we get into that, you need to understand the writing situation. A little bit of background on that. And this is going to be a very abbreviated version of the writing situation. I'm going to do a, another video later on it that I can get into a lot more detail detail of how you break down the writing situation, but you need to be aware before you start that a writing situation exists. Let's take the different kinds of writing situations that there are, the different things that you can write when you have a writing project to do. Start with the most basic one, letters. Now, there are all kinds of different letters, and I'm going to lump email in with letters because they're very similar, even though they're in a different mode. But letters and, and email are very similar, and it's when you're writing something to someone, either in a business setting or in a personal manner. You can also create memos. Memos typically are documents that are sent internally within an organization among employees, either from supervisors to subordinates or between peers. Uh, memos are meant to convey information within the confines of an organization. You may have to write reports. Those of you who are planning on going into any kind of management in your career, you will be asked at some point to write a report. And in that report, there are certain guidelines that you are expected to follow, and there are certain rules of formatting that you are expected to follow. Usually it's determined company by company. A lot of companies have their own templates that they want you to use, but you are expected to adhere to those standards. You also have, when we're, we're talking about business documents, another very common one is the resume. Those of you who are students, one day you're gonna be done with school and it's gonna be time for you to start applying for jobs and you're gonna need to write a resume. And there are very specific rules that you are supposed to follow. Now, getting away from business documents, other things that you could write, I write manuscripts, I'm a novelist, and so I have a lot of experience in putting novels and manuscripts together. Some people write screenplays. Uh, anybody who writes for television or for the movies, they put together screenplays. And a screenplay follows a very specific formatting. And if you are submitting a screenplay to any kind of a movie executive or television executive for consideration, if you do not follow the, the formatting guidelines that they have laid down and you do not follow the basic templates that they lay out for you of when action should occur and when there should be breaks and when there should be transitions, they are just going to throw it in to the trash. They're not even going to look at it because there are plenty of writers out there who will. And so you as the writer have to understand when you sit down to write a screenplay that there are definite things that you are supposed to follow when you put that together. We can also add into this poems. A lot of people like to express themselves through poetry. I'll also lump songs in with this, even though they're, they're different. They're, they're, there is a difference between poetry and songwriting, but we'll lump them together for our purposes here. A lot of people like to express themselves through writing poetry and writing music. So when you sit down to write a poem, it may not necessarily follow strict guidelines as in, you know, the, in the old days you, wrote, you sat down and wrote a sonnet. And today there's a lot more free verse and, you know, different styles of poetry that are out there, but there's still, you know a poem when you see it, and you know what constitutes a poem when you see it. And so there are rules that poetry follow, they just tend to be more informal than, say, the rules of a report. Now, if you're at work and your boss asks you to write a report and you come back and hand in a poem, there's a good chance you're probably going to get fired because you have not adhered to the rules that have been laid out of what a report is supposed to do. Likewise, if let's say you want to write a manuscript and you don't follow the formatting guidelines that the publishing house has requested, they're not going to take a look at whatever it is you've written because it's not what they're asking for. And there are too many people out there who will do what they ask for for them to waste time on you. Get it out of your head that you're a special snowflake and that they're going to bow down and want to read whatever it is you've had to written just because you wrote it. You have to adhere to the rules because they are there to make things simpler on them. They are the gatekeepers. They are the one you have to please to begin with. The same is true for the collegiate essay. The collegiate essay follows very specific rules, and there are parts of the collegiate essay that must be there in order for you to adhere to the standards that a college or university expects you to live up to. So we're going to take the collegiate essay and break it down. 
The first thing that I want you to understand is the purpose of the essay. Now, if you think back to when we talked about audience analysis and I gave you the three purposes of any form of writing that you do, a college essay is a little bit different. It has its own unique purpose and it really only applies here to the collegiate essay. That's why I didn't include it back there in audience analysis. But here you need to understand and this will cloud and cover everything that you do as it pertains to working on an essay. The purpose of the collegiate essay is to demonstrate your comprehension of the subject matter to your instructor. That is why you write them so that they know you understand what it is you just read, the lecture that you heard, presentation that you watched, whatever it is, that you understand it, have absorbed it, and assimilated it into your own thought patterns. That is crucial to understanding what an essay is. Now, the first section of the collegiate essay is the introduction. The introduction should provide the background information necessary for the audience to understand what this paper is going to be about. Now, I cannot give you one catch-all magical formula of how to write an introduction. As we get into specific kinds of essays, such as descriptive or compare and contrast, cause and effect, argumentative, the, the different styles of essays that are out there. As we get into those, I'll give you specific kinds of introductions that you need to do for those papers. But just know you do not want to start with those terrible openings of since the dawn of time, mankind has searched for answers to big quick. Cut that garbage out. You don't need that crap. You need to start letting them know that you understood what the assignment was. And the introduction that you give them needs to provide them enough background to demonstrate that you know what this assignment was supposed to cover. Now also in the introduction you're going to have your thesis statement. We will cover thesis statements in a little bit of detail here in a few minutes and then I'm also going to have a full video just on thesis statements because they're very important. Uh, but the thesis statement goes in the introduction and typically it's either the first or the last sentence of the introduction. We'll cover that more when we get to the, the whole video on thesis statements but just know that that's where the thesis statement belongs. You also are going to have the main body. Now the main body of the paper this is going to be the meat of what you do. This is where the majority of your grade is going to come from. Now, the main body of the paper is going to contain two primary elements. First, it's always going to have your topic sentences in it. And we'll talk about talk topic sentences towards the end of this video, explain what they are. The body of the paper is also where you lay out the main points that you were covering. And this is the meat of what you're saying. And this is why this is the majority of your grade, because this is where you demonstrate that comprehension. And again, as we get into specific essays, I will show you ways to organize and, and arrange specific main bodies for specific kinds of papers. And finally, you have the conclusion. The conclusion should be a summary of your main points. And in a collegiate essay, that's really all it needs to be. Now, some instructors instructors disagree with me about this and so you really need to make sure you understand your audience before you write the paper. But for me and the way I taught it and the way my students learned it and, and it usually worked for them, the conclusion should never have new information in it. It should only be a summary of those points that you have covered. If it's important enough to appear in the, in the conclusion, it should have been in the main body somewhere. Because again, that's where the majority of your grade is. And I know instructors out there, when you start getting into some of those higher level classes, they don't even really glance at the conclusion because they know it's just supposed to summarize what you've already said. So if you had a really major point that you wanted to cover and you didn't put it in the main body, it may not be part of your final grade. And so keep that in mind. The conclusion should not contain new information. It should just be a summary of the main points that you're going to cover. There is a little magical formula that you can do to write a good conclusion. It's a little trick. You can take each of your topic sentences that you have in the main body and you can rewrite those into new sentences. Keep them in the same basic order, but make sure you write them differently enough that they don't just sound like the exact same sentence restated. They, they need to be a little bit fresher than that. But just reword those topic sentences and then restate your thesis at the end, and voila, you have summarized your main points. That's a nice, neat little trick that saves you a lot of time when it comes to writing a conclusion. Now, if you look at this, here we have the introduction, the main body, and the conclusion. In the introduction, you're going to tell them what you're about to say. Then in the main body, you tell them what you want to say. And then in the conclusion, you tell them what you just told them. Tell them, tell them, tell them. It's an old adage that you need to learn. It works in speech, and it works in writing as well always lay things out. Here's what I'm about to tell you, then tell it to them. Hey, here's what I just told you. It's a very effective technique. It's been around for a long time and it works. There's a reason why it has stuck around for a long time. Don't try to reinvent the wheel 
use what is tried and true. All right, so now let's look real quickly at thesis statements. And again, I'm going to give you an entire video just on thesis statements because they're that important. But there are a couple of major things I want to cover here to make sure you don't confuse the thesis statement with the topic sentences. That's one of the big things that I always saw students do in my own teaching career was they would mix these two up. You don't want to do that. The thesis statement is the central idea of the entire paper, is a snapshot of that paper in one sentence. It always belongs in the introduction, and again, we'll cover that more when we get to that video. The thesis statement needs to do two major things. First thing it needs to do is answer the writing prompt. The writing prompt is whatever your instructor has given you explaining the assignment that you're supposed to do. It tells you what kind of essay it's supposed to be. Typically, now they may not directly come out and say compare and contrast, but there'll be keywords in there that let you know this is what you're supposed to do. But the thesis statement needs to answer that writing prompt. It needs to let your instructor know that you understood what the assignment was and you are responding directly to that writing prompt. That's the first thing the thesis statement needs to do. The second thing it needs to do is provide an overview of the main points that you're going to cover. And it's just a very brief overview. You're not getting into a lot of detail here. Again, you're just giving them a snapshot. This is what the paper is going to cover. Then we have our topic sentences. Now, topic sentences typically are going to be the first sentence in each main body paragraph. And that's where they belong. There are a couple of exceptions to that. We'll get to that later. But typically, topic sentence is the first sentence of the paragraph. And the topic sentence states very clearly and very directly the main point of that particular paragraph. And it stays focused just on one main point. And that's very key. As we go through specific papers, I'll give you some examples and show you this is what a good topic sentence should look like. Now, the third part here that I want to give you about topic sentences, I have to stress that this is not a rule. This is not something that you are going to find in a textbook. This is probably something that, that I would bet most instructors have never even really thought of. It's just something that I've observed over the years in my own writing when I was a student and then also as an instructor grading lots and lots and lots of papers and having seen lots and lots and lots of, of students come and go. Typically, good topic sentences are going to be between 10 and 15 words because the topic sentence needs to be short and to the point. It needs to be direct. You don't need a lot of fluff here. You don't need a lot of fanfare. You just are stating what that main point of the paragraph is. Again, the purpose of the essay is to demonstrate your comprehension of the subject matter. So for you, when you sit down to write your topic sentences, state them clearly so that the instructor knows this is the point you're going to make in this paragraph. And then you'll add in detail. Then you'll add in the beef to the, the rest of the paragraph. But keep your topic sentences very tight and very focused, and that will help you as the writer to keep your paragraphs very tight and very focused. Okay, so that's going to bring us to the end of this video. We have covered the collegian essay, and we have talked about the introduction with the thesis statement, the main body with the topic sentences, and then of course the conclusion as the summary. When we come back for video 14, we're going to jump into the thesis statement, and we're going to get into a lot of detail, a lot more detail about what a thesis statement is and what it isn't. All right, so I hope to see you back here for video number 14, and thank you for joining me this time. I'm D.A. Adams, the professor, and I'll see you later.